Hey guys, Greg here. It is time for a bunch of records that I bought this weekend. Once again, I bought too many records this weekend, and I did a bit of a VC meetup with Rob at The Waxed, and uh, I dragged him down to this audio show, this what I call audio geek show in Long Beach, that they do almost every year. This year was a small show because of the COVID. Uh, they didn't have a lot of uh, attendees and a lot of exhibitors, so it was a small show. The good news was we were able to get through it quickly. I'm sorry if I bored you Rob to death with audio geekness, but the chance to listen to great records on literally $50,000 systems uh, only comes once in a while if you don't have such a system. So good opportunity to get down there and uh, hang out with the audio geeks. Um, yeah, pretty much all old white men older than even me. Most of them had white hair. And uh, that's just the way the audiophile hobby is. I'm going to get to some records, guys. I promise. So the, f the second floor of this thing is what they call the um, marketplace. And they usually have a lot of record vendors. They only had two record vendors this year. Rob and I both spent a lot of time flipping through their records and found a couple of good things. So that's what I'm going to show you. Don't forget to watch Rob's video. He did a video on the records. He also did a video just on the Hi-Fi show. So, uh, let's get it started. I got this used for much less than I think some people are paying. Money Jungle, a tone poet. A used copy for, um, I don't need to tell you. It's, it's probably a normal price, but it's a little bit less than retail. But a used copy, this is my own special sleeve. So this is a really interesting record. I think 1965 is when it... No, 1962, excuse me. So this did not come out on Blue Note. This came out on United Artists Jazz. And United Artists... I think I'm going to mention them again later in this video. United Artists... Um, actually, I don't have anything to say about United Artists. They made a few records, and this is one of them. How's that? Duke Ellington, the great Duke Ellington, Charles Mingus, Max Roach, three of the greatest... And this this is a strange record. I think I'll do a video just on this record because there's so much to unpack. But uh, as I read about this record, Duke Ellington said, I want to make a record, a different kind of record, a record like I've never done before. Get me some great players. Charles Mingus, some consider one of the greatest bass players in jazz. I consider him one of the greatest comp composers in jazz. So Ellington may be the greatest composer in jazz. And Mingus, one of the top five or ten for sure. But these are all Duke Ellington tunes. And Duke said, I'm just going to write out some charts and write out some music. And they didn't even rehearse. So literally, according to the legend, what you're hearing on this record is these guys got together and played these tunes for the very first time. No rehearsal, one shot. Um, there are one or two tunes that are well known, like Caravan. Um which kind of everybody knows is a jazz standard featured at the end of uh, the movie Whiplash. But I like this record. It's a different kind of record because Ellington, um, I mean, he, this was late in his career. He died about 10 years later. And Ellington had was a star, you know, in the 20s and 30s and had a comeback. Anyway, I'm telling you too much about this record. Let's get back to the weekend. So, cool record. Glad I got it, but Somebody traded it in because they didn't like it, and I can understand. It's not for everybody. It's not like the first record you should be listening to type thing. Okay, what else did I get? Uh, from the used table, Montgomery Brothers. Now, Wes Montgomery had two brothers. Buddy Montgomery on piano, Monk Montgomery on bass. Recorded New York City... 1961. The sound of this record, and I'm not talking about the audiophile quality sound, just the groove, the playing. I just dig this record. I already have it on CD, but now I got it on record. 15 bucks. Riverside. It's 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 a re-release. Sounds fine. I don't know if it's a special re-release. It's special to me. So, Rob and I hung out, uh, bought some records, went and listened to some music uh, in the in the in the different music rooms they have, different, different like uh, manufacturers showing off their speakers and their turntables and their amps and all that stuff. Who's out in front of my house? That's weird. They're coming after me. Um, then we went 
thrifting, as we call it, looking for thrift shops. Oh, we went to a record store, Fingerprints in uh, Long Beach, really cool record store. We could have spent a lot of time there, but we didn't have that much time, so... I got one record, Alice Coltrane. I'm very into Alice Coltrane lately, Lord of Lords. This is kind of a beat copy, but it sounds okay, except like the first few minute or so is kind of kind of rough. But Alice Coltrane, Charlie Hayden on bass, Ben Riley, with an orchestra. So this is a kind of a different record for her. Excerpts from Igor Stravinsky's The Firebird with Orchestra, and she plays harp and piano and. Uh, this is one of her very first records. It looks very clean. The, the, the vinyl looks really clean. It sounds a little worse than it looks, but 15 bucks is a very cheap price for any uh, original Alice Coltrane. And uh, I hope Impulse releases a lot more of her early stuff. They've released some, but she's got a lot of great stuff. Uh, but the spiritual jazz, it's very much not like John Coltrane. Okay. Thrift stores. I think we had three thrift stores. We had three thrift stores. One fried chicken place that was fantastic. Gus's. If you ever find a Gus's, eat the fried chicken. Bunch of thrift stores. One road raid. One road raid incident. No one was killed. So that's always good news. Driving around the streets of Los Angeles or Long Beach. So Goodwill. We found some blue notes. We found some original blue notes at the Goodwill, and they were so thrashed, trashed, scratched, uh, abused, and contused that we probably wouldn't have bought them even if they were a penny. Um, we found two um, Jimmy Smith. That was my organ impression. Jimmy Smith uh, on blue note but they were way too thrashed. So sometimes these party albums, they just get, anyway. Uh, then we went to another Goodwill, and I got something I'm, I'm pretty happy with, actually. Cherry Mulligan with Art Farmer on um, the trumpet. Cherry Mulligan, baritone sax. What is there to say on Columbia? Original six eyeballs, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I don't know the year on this, I can't see it. So I'm just gonna move on. I cleaned it up. It it ain't perfect, but it was three bucks, and a good copy could go for a heck of a lot more. So that was the end of my my VC meetup with Rob. Uh, three thrift shops, record store, lunch, audio file show, and uh, the next day, as if I hadn't had enough abuse. I had three more Goodwills on my own here in the beautiful San Fernando Valley. And the one Goodwill by my house, I'm always convincing the records are $4.99. Some of them were marked blue sticker half off, so I got this for $2.50. There's more rock coming up, guys, in case you're bored with classical music. A really clean cover. Shostakovich. Oh, United Artists. Same label as the uh, Duke Ellington. United Artists promo. 1959 Symphony Number no. 1 and some other piece I can't pronounce and uh, Stakowski wait a minute Stakowski only conducts the minor piece on here Symphony what the heck Symphony of the Air oh he also wait you guys don't care so I'll just move on great artwork love Shostakovich but uh, I'm not a careful record shopper, as you will soon see. I buy things that I think are great. They turn out to be less than great. I saw this record at the uh, Audiophile show for, what was it, 10 or 20 bucks? Oh, now I see the thrift shop. I might as well get it. Oh, uh, Taj Mahal Blues. And I dig Taj Mahal. I don't know if this is one of his better records. Uh, it's got some sort of old-timey blues on it. The first song is with banjo and tuba and him singing. Uh, let's see, he plays national steel body guitar, kalimba, the little boom, 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 boom thing. Banjo, hand claps, conch shell he blows on, bass. The pointer singers do background vocals. I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. And Howard Johnson does hand claps. What year is this? 1972. Uh, interesting. I should give it another listen. Okay, why did you do that? It's got a very textury cover. 
Is that what the Pointer Sisters looked like in 1972? Were they even famous back then? I don't know. Uh, I thought this would be a record I could sell for hundreds of dollars on eBay. Alvin Lee and Ten Years After. Very nice, glossy cover. Uh, Duram, the London, the label from London. You think the Duram label is valuable? Not necessarily. It's a cool old rock label. So I listened to this and uh, the first song was very psych rock, a lot of re reverby, echoey stuff. And the rest of it was more bluesy, but it wasn't like the blazing fast Alvin Johnson blues licks. It was more twangy, country, rootsy blues. Not that that's bad, but Alvin Johnson is kind of like the first mega fast guitar hero for a lot of people. And I didn't hear that type of playing on that record. That might be a good gift for somebody in the, uh, in the VC. Okay, a couple more Goodwill records left. They're interesting, so hang tight. Uh, I thought this would be a good record that might be worth thousands of dollars because it's an unknown sort of early rock band brethren. And uh, 1970 something, Dr. John plays on here, wrote a song on here, plays keyboards. But uh, this is sort of, uh, I don't know this group of brethren other than they had at least one album. And to me, this sounds like early Blue, uh, Doobie Brothers. Early uh, Old Black Water era country twangy Doobie Brothers. Uh, guy's not a great singer. There's some Almond Brothery guitar licks on here. Uh, I see some copies going for 20, 40, 50 bucks on eBay, but that copy is not in the greatest condition. And then finally, let's talk the language of love with the great. Barry White. This record, I don't even know what it's called. It's 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 stamped on here. It says the man stamped on there. Let's take this out so you can see what's going on. There's a lot of pieces and bits here. What's the title of this record? What do they tell you? I don't know what the title of this record is. BW? Maybe it's called BW. So it's like an envelope with a wax seal, and then you open that up, and out comes this thing. And then, in addition to that, there's a sort of an 8x10 glossy sound by Bear, signed by Barry himself, and it says, Your sweetness is my weakness, love Barry. Now some clever person said, but this looked like an invitation to one of Barry White's orgies. And I said, I wouldn't know because I was not invited. I assume my invitation maybe slipped under the rug or something. But ironically, I've been to Barry White's house. Tarzana, California, right down the street from me. The guy uh, I used to play guitar with was friends with Barry White's son. And we jammed on guitar at his house. And I didn't meet Barry, so... That's the best for last, believe it or not. I'm going to put Barry back in his envelope. But I listened to this, and um, it's a little disco ear, a little more upbeat. It's got the strings and the fast uh, two two disco beats and the horns. There's a big horn section in here. So, upbeat party kind of a record. Not in as good a shape as I would have hoped, but when you see Barry White at a, at a Goodwill, you probably want to grab it. Okay, guys, that's the end of my Hi-Fi, Lo-Fi, VC Meetup, Record Store Day, No Record Store Day participation, mega weekend here in Los Angeles, corner, uh, California. Thanks to Rob at The Waxed for uh, letting me drag him around California, Southern California. And um, what else can I say, guys? Thanks for watching. Hit that button. Smash all the buttons, smash your camera, smash your phone, get smashed, smash your records, uh, mash your potatoes. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.